Hi, I'm Andrew from eDesign Photography and today we're going to be looking at taking this photo and using Photoshop to create a Rembrandt style painted look. So let's jump right in. So here we are in Photoshop and the first thing I'm going to do is open up the camera raw file. Because it's a camera raw file, it will automatically open up to the camera raw converter. And here's where we take our first steps to getting it ready for Photoshop. Uh, the first thing I do as a rule of thumb is I'll go to my lens settings and I'll make sure enable profile corrections is clicked. It's a very subtle difference, but what it does is it matches the lens and removes any barrel distortion which may be caused by it. Into our basic editor, I'll push the temperature all the way to the top so it's nice and warm and I'll counteract it with the vibrance going all the way to the bottom and instantly you can see we have this kind of warm, washed out look. So we are before and after. I'll also use this opportunity to see if I can raise the shadows a bit in this particular image. I might raise them all the way to the top. And I'll bring the highlights down. We used quite a harsh light, so it really kind of makes the skin a bit shiny. I'll just bring that down a little bit. That's good, and we're ready to go into Photoshop now. I've opened this object as a smart object. Uh, this isn't necessary, but the reason I'm doing this is so that I can create, by using new smart object, two of them. The first one I'll just go back into, and for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to set this to straight out of camera. So we can see the differences as we go along. So now we have the raw conversion as well as the original file. Uh, these don't need to be smart objects anymore, so I'll just rasterize them. This will make editing a lot faster, less stress on the machine. And I'll name them so I can keep tabs of what's going on. And I'll lock them as well just to make sure I don't accidentally edit them. For those interested in the process of making this photo, I've set up in Satellite 3D a nice little replication of the, the setup from that day. Uh, so this is my very small studio here. All it was was a gridded beauty dish uh, just offside and rather than pointing it straight at the face it's slightly feathered so it goes a little bit past the face. This helps the shadows uh, on the face from being a bit too harsh and to bring up the shadows a little bit more I've added a 120 centimeter octobox right behind my head and you'll see the difference it makes if I turn this off and on with just a beauty dish. It's just a face. Uh, it was wearing a black top. Uh, the background, which is a white background, goes completely black. This just brings up the background to be a little bit grey, which is important later on in the stage of adding a textured backdrop. So back in Photoshop, the first step I'll be doing just now is to even out the skin tones a little bit. We're still in this kind of high detail photo look and I want it to be a bit more of a I want it to be a bit more of a smooth painter look. The technique I'll do today for that will be the frequency separation technique. You may have saw this before in lots of other video tutorials. It's a very commonly used technique so that we can smooth out the skin while retaining skin details and not making it look a bit too Barbie doll plastic. My first step will be to create two duplicates to start off with. So I'll do it with Command J. Here we are. And I'll rename these to keep myself right. So the first one will be median and the next will be detail. We can ignore the detail one for now. So with median, our plan is to smooth out the skin as a starting point. So I'll go to noise and median. And my goal is to smooth out the skin, getting rid of any pores. Usually this is around four, five, maybe six on the scale. With the median effect, it does create a little bit of this kind of pixelated lines. So to combat that, I just do it a second time. The reason I use median rather than any other blur is that we can still maintain the edges. If I just blur this image, the blur would go beyond these edges. And I work on my detail layer. And to create a detail layer, we just go to image and apply image. What we want to do is reference the median layer just here and what we want to tell the apply image is to take this layer and subtract it from the detail. You have to make sure that the scale is set to 2 and the offset is set to 128. 
It'll look like it's all grey, but if we go very close, you'll see that the details are here and the rest is grey. Because it's a mid-tone grey, if we set it to linear light, the grey will become transparent. So now what we have is our original image recreated by separating it into both our detail layer as well as a smoothed out layer. My first step is usually to work on the detail layer. So with the detail layer selected, I will take a clone stamp tool and just go around the image looking for any issues of the skin I'd like to just get rid of in the texture. And by sampling the area around where I want to change it, I can just go through that. I always sample close to where I am so I don't end up with textures from different parts of the face in the wrong area. It also matches the depth of field. I can also use this project to remove any stray hairs that may be covering the face. Okay, so I'm happy with the detail there now, and just as a before and after. I can show how just very subtly I've just smoothed out the texture of the skin slightly. I'll now go into the median layer and start working on that. And how I do that is I dupe this up again with Command J and I'll start working on this in passes. I'll name this Median 1 and using a mixer brush, which is in your brush area here, and making sure this is selected here so that we have a nice clear brush. So in this first pass I don't mind being a bit too almost heavy handed with this because I'm going to be doing it in, in sections. So what I want to do is just smooth out all the colour detail of the skin. I'm making sure to follow the, the contours of the face. Okay, so there obviously it's quite heavy handed, so we'll go down and with the median one that are selected, we'll just bring that down to about 50%. And now, if we dupe up the original median layer again, call this median 2, we can go in and do some more fine touches on areas that we want to push a little bit further. In this pass, what I'm really aiming for is just slightly different areas of colour, where uh, it might be red patches or um, sections in the shadows I don't particularly want. So that's my second media layer done, I'm quite happy with that. So I will take these four layers, which are all the frequency separation skin retouching, and just group them together. I could also take this skin retouch layer and tweak the opacity on that as well, if I want to blend it slightly more. My next step would be to add a new textured background. So we shot this on a white background, but with the lighting it's now looking a bit grey. But it's also very flat, so to add a texture we can just place a texture. This particular texture I got from Glenn Dewis's texture pack. Uh, you could just uh, find a nice wall nearby to shoot, uh, but there's plenty of resources online. I'll fill this to the size of the image and set it to overlay. By overlaying it on the grey background we now have this nice textured look, but it's also affecting the model as well. So we can just paint that out with a mask. So by selecting a new mask for this layer and a black brush. We don't have to be too precise but it can be nice and big and soft and just delete it from the face and the body. What I can do here is by holding Alt and clicking on the mask itself I can just see where I've painted and that way I can fill in any gaps I may have missed. And Alt click again to bring it back to visibility. And quite quickly, we now have a new background. My next step will be using curves to balance out the image a little bit more. I've got an issue with this kind of highlight here. We did use quite harsh lighting, which has picked up quite big highlights on the, the side of the face. So I'll select a new curved adjustment layer. And with the mask selected on the curved adjustment layer, 
I can go back to apply image and select multiply what this has done if I look at the mask here if we all click on the mask here we can see what it's doing it's created a black and white mask the black sections will be deleted and the white sections will be visible so that way on our curves layer it will now only affect the highlight areas so I can bring it up and down and the shadows are unaffected this way I can just bring down the highlights this has also brought down our eyes a little bit so I can go back into the mask by alt clicking and just paint the eyes out with a black brush This means that this curved adjustment will no longer affect the eyes. So I alt click on the mask and we'll see with the mask off and on it's a slight change to the highlights but the eyes are unaffected. We could also use another curved adjustment layer to bring these eyes up even further if we wish. To do this I'll select this little hand tool here if I click on the eye and hold and drag, I can then affect the image based on that point that I've clicked. So I bring them up, it obviously brings up the whole image. So I can invert the mask with Command I and just paint in with a white brush where I want the curves adjustment layer to affect. brightened up the eyes slightly, which is likely going to be a bit too much. Yep, it is. It's horrible. So I will just bring it down here in the layer's opacity. Even more. So it's nice and subtle. There we are. Subtle look to the eyes. And my last step will be to do an overall curved adjustment layer for the whole image. And I can use this just to do a little bit of final tweaks. So the contrast maybe and get the image exactly where I want it to be. And here we have it. So we took this image out of camera, put it through a raw conversion, and then added a background and skin retouching. So that's my workflow into how to create a painfully effect in Photoshop. I hope you got a lot out of this, and thanks for watching.